Introduction. Imagine walking into a room and instantly knowing who's anxious, who's confident, and who's hiding something. Picture being able to tell with just a glance whether someone is genuinely interested in what you have to say or merely pretending. What if you could read the true emotions behind the words, the motivations that others try to conceal, and the unspoken thoughts that shape every interaction? This might sound like a superpower, but in reality, it's a skill, one that you can learn, refine, and master. Welcome to the world of reading people. Understanding human behavior is not just a skill for psychologists, detectives, or poker players. It's an invaluable tool in everyday life. Whether you're navigating the complexities of the workplace, building deeper relationships, or simply trying to make sense of the world around you, the ability to read people is a game changer. Why Reading People Matter studies have shown that up to 93% of communication is nonverbal. According to research by Albert Morabian, a pioneering figure in body language studies, only 7% of a message is conveyed through words, while 38% comes from tone of voice and a staggering 55% from body language. This means that the words we hear are just the tip of the iceberg, the real story lies beneath the surface. Consider a study by psychologist Paul Ekman, who discovered that micro-expressions, those fleeting facial expressions that last less than a second, can reveal a person's true feelings, even when they're trying to hide them. Ekman's work, which has been used by everyone from law enforcement to corporate negotiators, proves that our faces often betray what we're really thinking. But it's not just about facial expressions. The way someone stands, where they place their hands, how they tilt their head, every gesture, every movement, tells a story. And these stories can be the key to unlocking deeper understanding and connection with others. The Art and Science of Reading People, in this book, will explore both the art and the science of reading people. We'll delve into the psychological principles that govern human behavior, drawing on decades of research and real-world examples. But we won't stop there. You'll also learn practical techniques that you can start using immediately, from spotting lies in everyday conversations to gauging someone's true intentions within moments of meeting them. Each chapter will equip you with tools to become more attuned to the subtle cues that others unwittingly give off. You'll learn to see what others miss, to hear what others overlook, and to understand what others can't quite put into words. By the end of this journey, you won't just be listening to what people say, you'll be interpreting what they really mean a skill for life. The ability to read people is not about manipulation, it's about connection. It's about empathy and understanding, about seeing beyond the masks that we all wear and connecting with the true person underneath. Whether you're a leader looking to inspire your team, a partner seeking to strengthen your relationship, or simply someone who wants to navigate social situations with more ease, this book is your guide, so let's embark on this journey together. Let's unlock the secrets of human behavior, one expression, one gesture, one word at a time. By mastering the art of reading people, you'll gain not just a new skill, but a new way of seeing the world, and everyone in it. Point one, the science behind human behavior. Understanding human behavior has fascinated thinkers, philosophers, and scientists for centuries. What drives us? What makes us act the way we do? How do we communicate without words? These questions have led to a vast body of research that uncovers the subtle and often hidden forces that shape our interactions. In this chapter, we'll dive into the science behind human behavior, exploring the psychological, biological, and evolutionary foundations that allow us to read others and be read in return. The psychology of body language. Body language is the silent orchestra of movements, gestures, and expressions that accompany our words, adding layers of meaning to everything we say. While we may not be conscious of it, our bodies are constantly communicating. Understanding this silent language gives you a powerful tool for deciphering the intentions and emotions of those around you. Albert Morabian, whose research in the 1970s laid the groundwork for understanding the importance of nonverbal communication, famously established that 93% of communication is nonverbal. While this figure is sometimes debated, the core idea remains undisputed. Body language is a critical component of human interaction. It can affirm or contradict what's being said, provide context, and even communicate messages without a single word. Consider the simple act of crossing one's arms. While this could indicate that someone is feeling cold, in many contexts, it's a defensive posture, signaling discomfort or disagreement. A smile can be genuine, revealing true happiness, or it can be a mask, concealing frustration or anger. Understanding the nuances of these signals is key to reading people accurately. 
Psychologist Paul Ekman's research into facial expressions revealed that many expressions are universal. Smiles, frowns, and looks of surprise are recognized across cultures. These expressions are hardwired into us, part of our evolutionary inheritance. But beyond these basic emotions, there are micro-expressions, fleeting involuntary facial expressions that reveal true emotions in the blink of an eye. These micro-expressions are particularly important when someone is trying to hide their feelings. Learning to spot them gives you insight into what someone is really experiencing, even if they don't want you to know. The Biological Foundations of Behavior while psychology provides a framework for understanding the conscious and unconscious ways we communicate, biology offers insight into why we behave the way we do. The human brain is a complex organ, and many of our behaviors are driven by processes that occur without our awareness. For example, the amygdala, a small almond-shaped cluster of neurons deep within the brain, plays a crucial role in our emotional responses, particularly fear and pleasure. The amygdala is part of the limbic system an area of the brain that has been described as the seat of our emotions. When we perceive a threat, whether physical or social, the amygdala kicks into gear, triggering the fight-or-flight response. This response is an ancient survival mechanism, inherited from our ancestors, that prepares the body to either confront or flee from danger. But the amygdala doesn't just respond to threats. It also plays a role in processing positive emotions, like pleasure and reward. When you see someone's face light up with joy, that's their amygdala at work, signaling to the rest of their body that something good is happening. Understanding these biological responses helps explain why people react the way they do in different situations, and it provides clues for interpreting their behavior. Another important brain structure involved in behavior is the prefrontal cortex, which is located at the front of the brain. This area is responsible for higher-order functions, such as decision-making, social behavior, and personality expression. It's the part of the brain that weighs consequences, plans for the future, and exercises self-control. When you notice someone pausing before responding to a question, that's likely their prefrontal cortex at work, analyzing the situation and deciding on the best course of action. Our behavior is also influenced by neurotransmitters, chemical messengers in the brain that transmit signals between neurons. Dopamine, for example, is often called the feel-good neurotransmitter because it's associated with pleasure and reward. It's released when we experience something enjoyable, like eating good food or receiving a compliment. Oxytocin, sometimes referred to as the love hormone, plays a role in social bonding and trust. Understanding the role of these chemicals helps us see how our brains shape our interactions and responses to others. The evolutionary perspective, to truly grasp why we behave the way we do, it's essential to consider our evolutionary history. Humans are social animals, and our behavior has been shaped by millions of years of evolution. Many of the behaviors we exhibit today have their roots in survival strategies developed by our ancestors. Take, for instance, the importance of group dynamics. Early humans lived in small, tightly knit groups where cooperation was essential for survival. Those who could read the intentions and emotions of others had a distinct advantage. They could identify allies and potential threats, build strong social bonds, and navigate complex social hierarchies. These abilities were so crucial that they became hardwired into our brains, passed down through generations. The concept of in-group and out-group behavior is a prime example of this evolutionary influence. We tend to favor those who are part of our group, those who look like us, think like us, and share our values, because historically, our survival depended on the strength of our social group. This tendency still influences our behavior today, often leading to unconscious biases and snap judgments about others. Similarly, our tendency to mirror the behavior of those around us, a phenomenon known as the chameleon effect, is rooted in our evolutionary past. Mimicking others helped early humans build rapport and trust within their social groups. Today, you might notice this when you unconsciously adopt the posture or tone of someone you're speaking with. It's a subtle way of signaling that you're on the same wavelength, and it can be a powerful tool in building connections. The interplay of psychology, biology, and evolution, while psychology, biology, and evolution each offer unique insights into human behavior, they are deeply interconnected. Our biological responses are shaped by our evolutionary history, and these responses influence our psychological processes. Together, they create the complex tapestry of human behavior that we observe in ourselves and others. 
For example, when you see someone nervously tapping their foot, you're witnessing the interplay of these forces. The nervousness may stem from a psychological response to stress or anxiety, triggering a biological reaction, such as an increase in heart rate or the release of adrenaline, that manifests as a physical behavior. This behavior, in turn, may be rooted in an evolutionary response to perceived threats. Be why understanding this interplay, you can begin to decode the behaviors you observe in others. You'll be able to see beyond the surface and grasp the underlying mechanisms that drive human actions. This knowledge will not only make you a more astute observer of people, but will also help you navigate social interactions with greater ease and confidence. Applying the science of human behavior, as we move forward in this book, will build on the foundation laid in this chapter. Each subsequent chapter will offer practical techniques for applying this knowledge in real-world situations. You'll learn how to quickly assess a person's character, interpret subtle cues, and even spot deception. Armed with these skills, you'll be able to navigate any social situation with the confidence that comes from truly understanding the people around you. But remember, mastering the art of reading people is not about manipulating or controlling others. It's about building stronger connections, fostering empathy, and enhancing your ability to communicate effectively. By understanding the science behind human behavior, you'll be better equipped to engage with others in a way that is both authentic and insightful. So, as you continue on this journey, keep an open mind and be ready to observe the world around you in a new light. The science of human behavior is a powerful tool, and by mastering it, you'll gain a deeper understanding of not just others, but also yourself. 2. First Impressions How to Quickly Assess a Person They say you never get a second chance to make a first impression. In the blink of an eye, Often within the first seven seconds of meeting someone, our brains form a rapid-fire assessment that shapes our perception of that person. This initial judgment can influence everything that follows, how much we trust them, whether we want to continue interacting with them, and even how we interpret their subsequent actions. In this chapter, we'll explore the science and psychology behind first impressions, and I'll teach you how to harness this powerful phenomenon to quickly and accurately assess the people you encounter. The Science of Snap Judgments our brains are wired to make quick decisions. From an evolutionary standpoint, this makes perfect sense. Early humans needed to rapidly evaluate potential threats or allies in their environment to survive. This ability to make snap judgments became a deeply ingrained survival mechanism. While we no longer face the same dangers as our ancestors, the brain's tendency to quickly size up situations and people remains. Research by Princeton psychologists Janine Willis and Alexander Todorov has shown that it takes just a tenth of a second for people to form an impression of a stranger from their face alone. This rapid assessment isn't just about physical attractiveness, it also includes judgments about traits like trustworthiness, competence, and aggressiveness. Remarkably, these snap judgments tend to remain consistent even when we're given more time to evaluate a person, highlighting the lasting power of first impressions. But what exactly happens in our brains during this process? The amygdala, the part of the brain associated with emotion and fear, plays a crucial role in the formation of first impressions. It's responsible for assessing the emotional significance of stimuli and quickly determining whether someone is a friend or foe. Simultaneously, the prefrontal cortex, which handles decision making and social behavior, processes this information and influences our conscious judgments. These quick judgments are influenced by a variety of factors, many of which we're not consciously aware of. For instance, facial symmetry, a clear sign of genetic health, is often perceived as more attractive and trustworthy. Similarly, body language cues like a strong handshake or open posture can signal confidence and competence. Understanding these subconscious triggers can help you make a more informed assessment of someone when you first meet them. The power of appearance, don't judge a book by its cover is sage advice, but when it comes to first impressions, appearances do matter. What someone wears, how they carry themselves, and their overall grooming all contribute to the image they project to the world. While these factors may not necessarily reflect a person's true character, they do provide valuable clues about their self-perception, social status, and how they want to be perceived by others. Consider clothing, for example. A study published in the journal Personality and Social Psychology Bulletin found that people wearing more formal attire were perceived as more competent and authoritative compared to those in casual clothing. This phenomenon, often referred to as enclothed cognition, suggests that what we wear can influence not only how others perceive us but also how we perceive ourselves. 
But it's not just about what someone is wearing, how they wear it also matters. The fit of the clothing, the choice of colors, and attention to detail like accessories can all offer insights into a person's personality and priorities. A well-tailored suit might suggest meticulousness and a focus on professionalism, while a more relaxed, eclectic style could indicate creativity and openness to new experiences. Posture and body language are equally telling. Someone who stands tall with shoulders back exudes confidence and assertiveness, while slumped shoulders or a hunched stance might indicate insecurity or discomfort. Eye contact also plays a critical role. Steady eye contact can convey sincerity and confidence, while avoidance or overly intense staring might signal discomfort or even dishonesty. The role of facial expressions. Facial expressions are one of the most powerful tools for assessing someone during a first encounter. Our faces are incredibly expressive, capable of conveying a wide range of emotions without us ever saying a word. As we discussed in the previous chapter, psychologist Paul Ekman identified seven universal facial expressions, happiness, sadness, fear, anger, surprise, disgust, and contempt that are recognized across cultures. When you meet someone for the first time, their facial expressions can give you immediate insight into their emotional state. A genuine smile, for instance, can be identified by the presence of crow's feet wrinkles around the eyes, indicating true happiness or warmth. In contrast, a forced smile often lacks these wrinkles, with the mouth smiling but the eyes remaining neutral or tense micro-expressions. Those fleeting, involuntary facial expressions that last only a fraction of a second are particularly valuable when assessing someone's true feelings. Even if a person is trying to hide their emotions, micro-expressions can reveal what's really going on beneath the surface. For example, a flash of anger might briefly cross someone's face before they compose themselves, giving you a glimpse into their true reaction. Learning to read these expressions requires practice, but once you develop the skill, it becomes an incredibly effective way to quickly gauge someone's emotions and intentions. This ability to decode facial cues will allow you to respond more appropriately in the moment, building rapport and trust more effectively. Voice and speech patterns. While nonverbal cues are crucial, the way someone speaks also plays a significant role in forming a first impression. The tone, pitch, and rhythm of a person's voice can convey a wealth of information about their emotional state and personality. For example, a warm, steady tone often signals confidence and friendliness, while a higher pitch or a shaky voice might indicate nervousness or uncertainty. Research has shown that people tend to judge the competence, trustworthiness, and likability of others based on their voice. A study conducted at the University of Glasgow found that deeper voices are often associated with strength and authority, while higher-pitched voices may be perceived as less competent or authoritative. Interestingly, this bias extends beyond the actual content of what is being said, meaning that the same words can be interpreted differently depending on how they are spoken. Speech patterns, including the pace at which someone speaks, also matter. Fast speech can suggest enthusiasm or urgency, but it can also come across as nervousness or a lack of control. Slow, deliberate speech often conveys thoughtfulness and confidence but can be perceived as dull or overly cautious if not balanced appropriately. Pauses and fillers, such as um and uh, also contribute to the overall impression. While everyone uses these fillers to some extent, excessive use can indicate uncertainty or a lack of preparedness. On the other hand, well-timed pauses can create emphasis and give the speaker an air of authority be why paying attention to these vocal cues, you can better understand a person's emotional state and personality, allowing you to tailor your responses accordingly. The halo effect, how first impressions shape everything. Once a first impression is formed, it can be difficult to change, thanks in part to a psychological phenomenon known as the halo effect. This cognitive bias causes our overall impression of a person to influence how we perceive their individual traits. In other words, if someone makes a positive first impression, we're more likely to view everything else about them in a favorable light. Conversely, a negative first impression can taint our perception of their subsequent actions. The halo effect is particularly powerful because it often operates at a subconscious level. We may not even realize that our initial judgment is coloring our perception, making it challenging to remain objective. This bias can have a significant impact on everything from hiring decisions to social interactions, making it essential to be aware of its influence. Understanding the halo effect can also be a strategic advantage. By making a strong positive first impression, you can create a lasting influence on how others perceive you, giving you a head start in building relationships and trust. How to make a strong first impression. 
Now that you understand the science behind first impressions, it's time to put that knowledge into practice. Whether you're meeting someone new in a professional setting, on a date, or in a social context, these tips will help you make a strong positive impression. Dress appropriately for the occasion. Your clothing should reflect the situation and the impression you want to make. Aim for attire that is clean, well-fitted, and suitable for the environment. Mind your body language, stand tall, maintain good posture, and make eye contact. A firm, confident handshake goes a long way in establishing trust. Smile genuinely. A genuine smile can create an instant connection. Remember to engage your eyes as well as your mouth for a more authentic expression. Use a warm, steady voice. Pay attention to your tone, pitch, and pace. Speak clearly and confidently, and avoid excessive fillers, be attentive and engaged. Show interest in the other person by listening actively, nodding in agreement, and asking thoughtful questions. This not only helps you gather more information but also signals respect and attentiveness. Practice mindfulness. Be aware of your own biases and the halo effect. Strive to remain objective and open-minded, especially in situations where first impressions carry significant weight. Adapt to the situation. Every encounter is unique, so be flexible in your approach. Tailor your behavior to the context and the individual you're interacting with. Turning first impressions into lasting impressions. First impressions are powerful, but they're only the beginning of the story. Once you've made a positive initial impact, it's important to reinforce and build upon that foundation. Consistency is key. Make sure your actions align with the image you've projected. Over time, these repeated positive interactions will solidify the favorable impression you've created, turning a good first impression into a lasting one in the next chapter. We'll delve deeper into the nuances of reading people, focusing on the eyes, the windows to the soul. You'll learn how to interpret eye movements and what they reveal about a person's thoughts, intentions, and emotions. Armed with this knowledge, you'll be able to read people with even greater precision, giving you the edge in any social or professional situation. 3. The eyes have it. Decoding eye movements and what they reveal, it's often said that the eyes are the windows to the soul, and for good reason. Our eyes are not just passive receivers of visual information, they are active communicators, revealing a wealth of information about our thoughts, intentions, and emotions. In this chapter, we'll explore the fascinating world of eye movements, uncovering how subtle shifts in gaze, pupil dilation, and even blinking patterns can offer deep insights into what a person is truly thinking and feeling. The language of the eyes. When we communicate, our eyes play a crucial role in conveying meaning beyond words. They are one of the most expressive parts of the human body, capable of signaling everything from interest and attraction to deceit and discomfort. Understanding the language of the eyes allows you to decode these signals and gain a clearer picture of the underlying emotions and thoughts that drive a person's behavior. The eyes are connected to the brain via the optic nerve, which transmits visual information from the retina to the brain's visual cortex. But the eyes are not just passive recipients of light and images, they are also controlled by muscles and nerves that respond to cognitive and emotional states. This connection between the eyes and the brain makes eye movements a reliable indicator of what's happening in the mind. Research has shown that eye movements are closely linked to cognitive processes. For example, when people are thinking, remembering, or imagining something, their eyes tend to move in specific patterns. These movements, often referred to as eye accessing cues, can reveal whether someone is recalling a memory, creating a new thought, or processing information. By learning to recognize these cues, you can gain valuable insight into what a person is thinking at any given moment. Eye contact, the balancing act, eye contact is one of the most powerful forms of nonverbal communication. It can create a sense of connection, signal attention, and even establish dominance. But it's a delicate balance. Too little eye contact can be perceived as disinterest or dishonesty, while too much can come across as aggressive or invasive. In most social interactions, maintaining an appropriate level of eye contact is key to building trust and rapport. Studies have shown that people who maintain eye contact are perceived as more confident, honest, and competent. This is because eye contact signals that you are engaged in the conversation and genuinely interested in the other person. However, the amount and type of eye contact that is considered appropriate can vary depending on cultural norms, social context, and individual comfort levels. In some cultures, direct eye contact is seen as a sign of respect and attentiveness, while in others, it may be considered rude or confrontational. 
Understanding these cultural differences is important when interacting with people from diverse backgrounds in addition to cultural factors. The context of the interaction also plays a role in determining the appropriate level of eye contact. For example, in a professional setting, maintaining steady eye contact during a conversation can convey confidence and authority. In a more casual or social setting, frequent breaks in eye contact may be more natural and comfortable for both parties. But what happens when someone avoids eye contact altogether? This can be a red flag, especially if it occurs during a critical moment in the conversation, such as when someone is asked a direct question. Avoidance of eye contact can indicate discomfort, guilt, or even deception. However, it's important not to jump to conclusions. Some people may avoid eye contact due to shyness, anxiety, or cultural reasons rather than dishonesty. Reading eye movements, up, down, and sideways, beyond simple eye contact, the direction in which someone's eyes move can reveal important clues about their thought processes. These movements are often unconscious, making them a reliable indicator of what's going on inside a person's mind. The concept of eye accessing cues, popularized by the field of neurolinguistic programming, NLP, suggests that people's eye movements correspond to specific types of cognitive activity. Here's a breakdown of what different eye movements might indicate. Upward movements. When someone looks up, they are often accessing visual information. If they look up and to the left, they may be recalling a visual memory, such as what someone was wearing or how a place looked. Looking up and to the right, on the other hand, can indicate that the person is creating a new image or imagining something that hasn't actually happened. Lateral movements, side-to-side -side eye movements are typically associated with auditory processing. Looking directly to the left might indicate that the person is recalling something they've heard before, such as a conversation or a piece of music. Looking to the right could suggest they are constructing a new sound in their mind, like imagining what someone might say in a hypothetical scenario. Downward movements. When someone's eyes move downward, they are often engaged in internal dialogue or accessing their emotions. Looking down and to the left can be a sign that the person is talking to themselves internally or analyzing something. Looking down and to the right is often associated with accessing emotions or feelings. It's important to note that while these eye-accessing cues can provide valuable insights, they are not foolproof. Different individuals may have variations in how they use these cues, and some may not follow these patterns at all. Therefore, it's crucial to consider eye movements as just one piece of the puzzle when assessing someone's thoughts and feelings. The truth in the eyes, pupil dilation and deception. One of the most intriguing aspects of eye behavior is the way our pupils react to different stimuli. Pupils naturally dilate, become larger, and constrict become smaller in response to changes in light, but they also respond to emotional and cognitive states. This involuntary response can offer valuable clues about a person's true feelings. For example, research has shown that pupils tend to dilate when a person is experiencing strong emotions, such as excitement, fear, or attraction. This is because the autonomic nervous system, which controls involuntary bodily functions, responds to emotional arousal by dilating the pupils to allow more light into the eyes, potentially improving vision in moments of high alertness and social interactions. Pupil dilation can indicate interest or attraction. When someone is genuinely engaged in a conversation or finds the person they're speaking to attractive, their pupils may dilate. Conversely, a lack of interest or negative emotions may cause the pupils to constrict. But what about deception? Pupil dilation can also be a sign that someone is lying or experiencing cognitive dissonance, the mental discomfort that arises when a person holds two conflicting beliefs or is forced to lie. Lying typically requires more mental effort than telling the truth, as the liar must not only fabricate a story but also keep track of the lie and manage the associated emotions. This increased cognitive load can cause the pupils to dilate. However, Interpreting pupil dilation as a sign of deception should be done with caution. Pupil responses can be influenced by a variety of factors, including lighting conditions, emotional states, and even drug use. Therefore, it's important to consider pupil dilation alongside other cues, such as body language and speech patterns, when assessing whether someone is being truthful. Blink rate, the subtle indicator, another often overlooked aspect of eye behavior is blinking. While blinking is a natural and necessary function that helps keep our eyes lubricated and free of debris, the rate at which we blink can also be influenced by cognitive and emotional factors and normal conditions. People tend to blink at a rate of about 15 to 20 times per minute. However, 
this rate can increase or decrease depending on what's happening in the brain. For example, when someone is under stress, experiencing anxiety, or lying, their blink rate may increase. This is because stress and cognitive load trigger the release of neurotransmitters like dopamine, which can affect the muscles responsible for blinking. Conversely, a decrease in blink rate can occur when someone is deeply focused or concentrating on a task. This is why you might notice that someone blinks less frequently when they are intensely engaged in a conversation or activity. A lower blink rate can also indicate that the person is experiencing positive emotions or is in a relaxed state. While changes in blink rate can provide insights into a person's mental state, it's important to consider the context. For example, someone who is blinking rapidly might simply be tired or experiencing eye irritation. As with other eye-related cues, blink rate should be interpreted in conjunction with other behavioral signals. The eyes in context, putting it all together, as we've explored throughout this chapter, the eyes are a powerful tool for understanding what's happening beneath the surface of a person's outward demeanor. From the direction of their gaze to the dilation of their pupils, the eyes can reveal a wealth of information about thoughts, emotions, and intentions. However, it's essential to remember that no single cue should be taken as definitive. People are complex, and their behaviors are influenced by a wide range of factors, both internal and external. To accurately read someone, you need to consider the full context, what they're saying, how they're saying it, their body language, and the situation at hand. When you start paying closer attention to the eyes, you'll begin to notice patterns and correlations between eye movements and other behaviors. Over time, this practice will sharpen your ability to read people more accurately and respond to them in ways that foster understanding and connection. Point four, the art of listening, unveiling hidden messages through speech. Words are powerful, but how often do we truly listen to them? In our fast-paced world, where conversations are often rushed and distractions are abundant, the art of listening has become a rare and valuable skill. Yet, listening is not just about hearing words, it's about tuning in to the underlying messages, the emotions, and the intentions behind those words. In this chapter, we'll explore how to master the art of listening, enabling you to decode the subtle cues hidden in speech and understand people on a deeper level. The importance of active listening. Active listening is the cornerstone of effective communication. It goes beyond simply hearing what someone is saying, it involves fully engaging with the speaker, paying attention to both their words and the nuances of their delivery. Active listening requires focus, empathy, and an open mind. It's about being present in the moment and making a conscious effort to understand the other person's perspective. When you practice active listening, you send a powerful message that you value the speaker and are genuinely interested in what they have to say. This not only strengthens your connection with the person, but also encourages them to be more open and honest with you. In turn, this openness allows you to gain deeper insights into their thoughts, feelings, and intentions. Point one study conducted by researchers at Wright State University found that effective listening is one of the most critical skills for building and maintaining interpersonal relationships. The study highlighted that people who feel listened to are more likely to trust and confide in the listener. This makes active listening an invaluable tool not only in personal relationships but also in professional settings, where trust and communication are key to success. The power of words, what people say, the words people choose can reveal much about their state of mind, their beliefs, and their intentions. By paying close attention to the language used, you can uncover hidden meanings and gain a better understanding of what's truly being communicated. Point one. Word choice and emotional state. The specific words someone uses often reflect their emotional state. For example, words with strong emotional connotations, such as thrilled, devastated, or furious, indicate the intensity of the speaker's feelings. On the other hand, more neutral language might suggest that the person is trying to maintain emotional distance or remain objective. When someone frequently uses negative language or pessimistic phrases, it may signal underlying issues such as stress, anxiety, or dissatisfaction. Conversely, positive, optimistic language can indicate happiness, confidence, or contentment. By noting the emotional tone of the words used, you can gauge how the person is feeling and tailor your response accordingly. Point two. Repetition and emphasis. Pay attention to words or phrases that are repeated throughout a conversation. Repetition often highlights what is most important to the speaker, whether it's a concern, a belief, or a value they hold dear. If someone keeps returning to a particular topic or word, it's likely something that is occupying their thoughts. Similarly, emphasis on certain words, 
whether through a change in tone, volume, or pitch, can indicate significance. For instance, if someone raises their voice when saying, I really need you to understand, it signals the importance of the message and a desire for the listener to pay close attention. Point three. Qualifiers and hedge words. Qualifiers such as maybe, kind of, sort of, and I guess can indicate uncertainty or a lack of confidence in what the speaker is saying. When people use hedge words, they may be unsure of their position, trying to soften their message, or avoid confrontation. Recognizing these verbal cues can help you assess whether the person is being tentative or if they are deliberately trying to downplay their message. Point four. Contradictions and inconsistencies. Listen for contradictions within the conversation. When someone's words don't align with their previous statements or their body language, it may indicate that they are not being entirely truthful or that they are conflicted about what they are saying. For example, if someone says, I'm not upset, but their tone is tense and their arms are crossed, there's likely a discrepancy between their words and their true feelings. Point five. Speaking in absolutes, phrases like always, never, everyone, and nobody are absolutes that often exaggerate reality. When people use absolutes, it can be a sign of emotional reasoning, where they are letting their feelings dictate their thoughts. For instance, someone might say, you never listen to me, when they are feeling unheard at that moment, even if it's not entirely true. Recognizing this can help you understand the intensity of their emotions and address the underlying issues. The music of speech, how people say it, while the content of speech is important, how someone speaks, their tone, pitch, pace, and rhythm can be equally revealing. These vocal elements provide insight into the speaker's emotional state and can help you interpret the true meaning behind their words. Point one. Tone of voice. The tone of voice is one of the most telling aspects of speech. It conveys emotion, intention, and attitude. A warm, friendly tone can indicate openness and enthusiasm, while a cold or flat tone might suggest disinterest or detachment. A sarcastic tone, where the words contradict the intended meaning, can reveal underlying resentment or frustration. Tone can also indicate sincerity or deception. For instance, a person who is genuinely apologetic will likely speak in a soft, contrite tone, while someone who is merely going through the motions may sound insincere or robotic. Learning to distinguish between these subtle differences in tone can help you better understand the speaker's true feelings. 2. Pitch and Inflection Changes in pitch and inflection can signal shifts in emotion or emphasize particular points in a conversation. A rising pitch at the end of a sentence often indicates a question or uncertainty, while a falling pitch suggests confidence or finality. A person's pitch may also rise when they are excited or anxious, and lower when they are calm or reflective. Inflection, or the modulation of pitch within a sentence, can change the meaning of words. For example, the phrase you're going to do that, can be interpreted differently depending on whether the speaker's pitch rises or falls on the word that. A rising inflection might suggest surprise or disbelief, while a falling inflection could indicate disappointment or resignation. Point three. Pace and pauses. The speed at which someone speaks can reveal much about their emotional state. Rapid speech is often associated with excitement, urgency, or nervousness, while slow speech may indicate thoughtfulness, hesitation, or even deception. Pauses in speech can also be significant. A long pause before answering a question might suggest that the person is carefully considering their response, or it could be a sign of discomfort or uncertainty in addition to pace. The rhythm of speech, the pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables, can provide insight into a person's state of mind. A rhythmic, flowing speech pattern often indicates confidence and ease, while a halting or erratic rhythm might suggest anxiety or insecurity. Point four. Volume and intensity. The volume at which someone speaks can be a clue to their emotions and intentions. Speaking loudly may indicate anger, passion, or desire to dominate the conversation, while speaking softly might suggest timidity, vulnerability, or a need for privacy. Changes in volume during a conversation can also signal shifts in emotion. For example, someone might start speaking softly but then raise their voice as they become more emotionally engaged. Intensity or the energy with which someone speaks can also be telling. High-intensity speech, marked by strong emphasis and forceful delivery, often indicates strong emotions, such as anger or excitement. Low-intensity speech, on the other hand, may reflect calmness, sadness, or a lack of enthusiasm. Reading between the lines, the hidden messages sometimes, what is left unsaid can be just as important as what is spoken. 
silence, vague statements, and indirect communication can all carry hidden messages that require careful interpretation. Point 1. Silence and pauses. Silence can be a powerful communicative tool. It can signal agreement, contemplation, discomfort, or desire to end the conversation. In some cases, silence is used to create space for the listener to process information or to encourage them to speak up. Pauses, particularly when they occur after a direct question, can indicate that the speaker is choosing their words carefully or is uncertain about how to respond. Point two. Vague or ambiguous language. When someone uses vague or ambiguous language, it can be a sign that they are trying to avoid a direct answer or are uncomfortable with the topic. Phrases like it's complicated, I guess so, or maybe can indicate a reluctance to commit or reveal their true feelings. In such cases, it's important to gently probe for more information to clarify their meaning. Point 3. Indirect communication. People often use indirect communication to soften the impact of their message or to avoid confrontation. This can involve hinting at something rather than stating it outright, using humor or sarcasm to convey criticism, or speaking in generalities instead of specifics. Recognizing indirect communication requires careful attention to context and the relationship between the speaker's point four. The role of context, understanding the context in which something is said is crucial to interpreting hidden messages. Context includes the physical environment, the relationship between the speakers, and the overall situation. For example, a casual comment made in a relaxed setting might carry a different weight than the same comment made during a heated argument. By considering the context, you can better understand the intent behind the words and respond more effectively. Enhancing your listening skills mastering the art of listening takes practice and mindfulness. Here are some strategies to help you become a more effective listener. 1. Be fully present. Eliminate distractions and focus entirely on the speaker. This means putting away your phone, avoiding interrupting, and making a conscious effort to engage with the person. Point two. Reflect and clarify. After the speaker has finished, reflect on what they've said and ask clarifying questions if needed. This not only shows that you're paying attention, but also helps ensure that you've accurately understood their message. Point three. Listen for emotions. Pay attention to the emotional tone of the conversation. Notice how the speaker's words and tone align, and consider what their emotions might reveal about their underlying concerns or desires. Point four. Practice empathy. Try to put yourself in the speaker's shoes and understand their perspective. Empathy helps build trust and encourages the speaker to share more openly. Point five. Respond thoughtfully. After listening, take a moment to consider your response. Thoughtful responses acknowledge the speaker's feelings and offer support or solutions where appropriate. Be why honing your listening skills, you'll be better equipped to decode the hidden messages in conversations, understand others more deeply, and build stronger, more meaningful relationships. In the next chapter, we'll explore how to read and interpret the body language that accompanies speech, giving you a complete toolkit for understanding the people around you. 5. The eyes have it. Decoding eye movements and gazes when it comes to understanding people, the eyes are often described as the windows to the soul. This poetic phrase captures the profound truth that our eyes reveal much about our thoughts, emotions, and intentions. In this chapter, we will delve into the world of eye movements and gazes, exploring how these subtle cues can help you decode what others are really thinking and feeling. The language of the eyes. The eyes are incredibly expressive. Unlike other forms of nonverbal communication, such as gestures or posture, eye movements and gazes are often involuntary, making them particularly revealing. Whether it's a fleeting glance, an intense stare, or a casual gaze, the way someone uses their eyes can communicate volumes about their inner state. Point one of the reasons eye behavior is so telling is that it's closely linked to the brain's processing of information. For example, when we're thinking, remembering, or experiencing strong emotions, our eyes often reflect these cognitive and emotional activities. Understanding the language of the eyes requires careful observation and an awareness of the context in which the behavior occurs. Eye contact, connection or confrontation. Eye contact is one of the most powerful forms of nonverbal communication. It can create a strong connection between people, convey trust and sincerity, or signal confrontation and dominance. The meaning of eye contact varies depending on cultural norms, the relationship between the individuals, and the context of the interaction. Point one. Establishing trust through eye contact. In many cultures, 
making direct eye contact is seen as a sign of honesty and confidence. When someone looks you in the eyes while speaking, it often indicates that they are engaged and sincere. Research has shown that people who maintain good eye contact are perceived as more trustworthy, likable, and competent. For instance, a study conducted by the University of Wolverhampton and the University of Stirling found that participants who made direct eye contact were more likely to be trusted by others. The study also noted that the duration of eye contact played a role. Too little eye contact could be perceived as disinterest or dishonesty, while too much could be seen as intrusive or aggressive. Point two. The impact of culture on eye contact. It's important to note that the significance of eye contact can vary greatly across cultures. In some Asian cultures, for example, prolonged eye contact can be considered disrespectful or confrontational, particularly when interacting with someone of higher status. In contrast, Western cultures often view strong eye contact as a sign of confidence and attentiveness. Understanding these cultural differences is crucial when interpreting eye behavior, especially in diverse or international settings. Being sensitive to the cultural norms surrounding eye contact can help you navigate social interactions more effectively and avoid potential misunderstandings. Point 3. Avoidance of eye contact. When someone avoids eye contact, it can be a sign of several different things, depending on the context. Avoiding eye contact may indicate discomfort, anxiety, or guilt. It can also suggest that the person is trying to hide something or is not fully engaged in the conversation. For example, if someone looks away frequently while speaking, they may be feeling insecure or unsure about what they are saying. On the other hand, if someone avoids eye contact while being questioned, it could be a sign that they are not being entirely truthful. However, it's essential to consider other factors, such as the person's personality or cultural background, before jumping to conclusions. Point 4. Dominance and Submission Eye contact can also be a tool for asserting dominance or submission in social interactions. A prolonged unblinking stare can be intimidating and is often used to establish dominance or control in a situation. Conversely, lowering the eyes or breaking eye contact can signal submission or deference. This dynamic is frequently observed in hierarchical relationships, such as between a boss and an employee or a parent and a child. The dominant individual may maintain strong eye contact to assert their authority, while the subordinate may look away to acknowledge the power imbalance. The direction of the gaze. Where are they looking? The direction in which someone looks can provide valuable clues about what they are thinking or feeling. Our eyes tend to move in specific ways when we are processing different types of information, and by paying attention to these movements, you can gain insight into the other person's mental state. Point one. Looking upwards, accessing memories or imagining. When someone looks upwards, it often indicates that they are accessing memories or visualizing something. Looking up and to the left typically suggests that the person is recalling a visual memory, while looking up and to the right may indicate that they are imagining or constructing a new image in their mind. For example, if you ask someone to describe their last vacation and they glance upwards and to the left, it's likely that they are recalling specific details from memory. On the other hand, if they look upwards and to the right, they might be creating a mental picture of a vacation they would like to take in the future. Point two. Looking sideways, auditory processing. Sideways glances can be linked to auditory processing. When someone looks to the left or right while you are speaking, they might be trying to remember or analyze something they've heard. Looking to the left is often associated with recalling sounds or conversations from the past, while looking to the right may indicate that the person is imagining how something might sound. This type of eye movement can be particularly useful to observe during conversations where you're asking someone to recall specific information. If they look sideways, it may suggest that they are mentally replaying a conversation or trying to remember what was said. Point 3. Looking downwards, emotions and internal dialogue. When someone looks down, it often indicates that they are experiencing strong emotions or engaging in internal dialogue. Looking down to the left is associated with accessing internal feelings or self-talk, while looking down to the right may indicate that the person is processing their emotions or feeling ashamed. For instance, if you're discussing a sensitive topic and the other person looks down and to the right, it could suggest that they are feeling emotional or embarrassed. Similarly, if someone looks down to the left while considering a difficult decision, they may be weighing their options through internal dialogue. The power of the pupils, dilation and constriction. Pupil size is another key indicator of emotional and cognitive states. Although we can't control our pupils consciously, they respond to various stimuli, including light, 
emotional arousal, and cognitive load. By observing changes in pupil size, you can gain insights into a person's level of interest, attraction, or stress point one. Pupil dilation, interest and attraction. Pupil dilation is often linked to heightened interest or attraction. When we are excited, intrigued, or attracted to someone or something, our pupils tend to dilate. This is an unconscious response, driven by the sympathetic nervous system, that can indicate a person's emotional state. For example, if someone's pupils dilate while they're talking to you, it could be a sign that they are deeply interested in the conversation or attracted to you. Studies have shown that pupil dilation is a reliable indicator of emotional arousal, with larger pupils often signaling positive feelings or attraction point two. Pupil constriction, disinterest or discomfort. Conversely, pupil constriction can indicate disinterest, discomfort, or even aversion. When we encounter something unpleasant or when we are in a state of low arousal, our pupils tend to constrict. This response is also influenced by the parasympathetic nervous system, which is associated with relaxation and rest. If you notice someone's pupils constricting during a conversation, it might suggest that they are not particularly engaged or that they are feeling uncomfortable. However, it's important to consider environmental factors as well, such as lighting, which can also affect pupil size point three. The influence of cognitive load. Pupil size can also be influenced by cognitive load, the mental effort required to process information. When someone is concentrating hard or solving a complex problem, their pupils may dilate as a result of the increased cognitive demand. This response is often subconscious, but it can provide a clue to how much mental effort the person is exerting. For instance, if you're discussing a challenging topic and notice the other person's pupils dilating, it may indicate that they are fully engaged and thinking deeply about what you're saying. Conversely, if their pupils remain constricted, they might not be as invested in the conversation or could be finding it easy to process. Blinking and eye movement patterns. The frequency and pattern of blinking can also reveal much about a person's mental and emotional state. Blinking is a natural reflex that helps keep our eyes moist and free from irritants, but it can also be influenced by stress, anxiety, or cognitive processing. Point one. Rapid blinking. Rapid blinking is often associated with stress, anxiety, or deception. When someone is feeling nervous or uncomfortable, their blink rate may increase as a result of heightened arousal. In some cases, rapid blinking can also indicate that the person is trying to process a large amount of information or is experiencing cognitive overload. For example, if someone starts blinking rapidly during a difficult conversation, it might suggest that they are feeling stressed or anxious about the topic. Alternatively, if they blink rapidly after being asked a direct question, it could be a sign that they are struggling to come up with a truthful answer point two. Slow blinking, on the other hand, slow blinking can indicate relaxation, boredom, or even deceit. When someone is relaxed or disinterested, their blink rate tends to decrease. Slow blinking can also be a sign that the person is deliberately controlling their eye movements to appear calm or composed which can sometimes indicate that they are being less than truthful. If you notice someone blinking slowly during a conversation, it might suggest that they are not fully engaged or that they are trying to maintain a facade of calmness. However, it's important to consider the context and other nonverbal cues before drawing conclusions. Point three. Eye movement patterns. In addition to blink rate, the pattern of eye movements can provide insights into a person's thought process. For example, when someone's eyes move back and forth quickly, it may indicate that they are trying to gather information or assess their surroundings. This type of eye movement is often seen in situations where the person is feeling uncertain or trying to make a decision. Understanding these eye movement patterns can help you gauge whether someone is feeling confident, uncertain, or distracted. By paying attention to the direction and speed of their eye movements, you can gain a better understanding of their current state of mind. Putting it all together, the eyes is a key to understanding. By mastering the art of reading eye movements and gazes, you can unlock a wealth of information about the people around you. The eyes are a powerful tool for understanding others, revealing their thoughts, emotions, and intentions in ways that words alone cannot. However, it's important to remember that interpreting eye behavior is not an exact science. While the eyes can provide valuable clues, they should always be considered in conjunction with other nonverbal signals and the broader context of the interaction. By combining your knowledge of eye movements with a deep understanding of body language, tone of voice, and situational factors, you'll be able to read people with remarkable accuracy. 6. Reading Faces Understanding Micro-Expressions and Facial Cues 
The human face is an intricate canvas of emotions, capable of expressing a vast range of feelings in a split second. While we might think we're masters of concealing our true emotions, our faces often betray us through micro-expressions, those fleeting involuntary facial movements that occur when we try to hide or suppress our true feelings. In this chapter, we'll explore how to read these subtle cues and understand the deeper emotions that lie behind a person's words. The science of micro-expressions. Micro-expressions are incredibly brief, lasting only a fraction of a second, but they can reveal a person's true emotions even when they're trying to hide them. These expressions are universal, meaning they are the same across different cultures and societies, which makes them a powerful tool for reading people in any context, Dr. Paul Ekman, a renowned psychologist, was one of the first to identify and study micro-expressions in detail. His research showed that there are seven universal emotions, happiness, sadness, anger, fear, surprise, disgust, and contempt, that are expressed similarly by everyone, regardless of cultural background. Understanding these micro-expressions allows you to detect underlying emotions that might not be evident in a person's words or tone of voice. The seven universal emotions. Let's break down these seven universal emotions and how they manifest on the face. 1. Happiness. Happiness is perhaps the easiest emotion to recognize. A genuine smile, known as a Duchenne smile, involves the activation of the muscles around the mouth and eyes. The corners of the mouth turn up, and crow's feet appear at the outer corners of the eyes. If only the mouth is smiling and the eyes remain unchanged, the smile might be forced or insincere. Point two. Sadness. Sadness is typically marked by drooping eyelids, a downturned mouth, and a slight frown. The inner corners of the eyebrows may also pull up, creating a slight wrinkle on the forehead. This expression is often subtle, as people tend to hide their sadness, making it important to pay close attention to these small cues. Point three. Anger. Anger is characterized by a furrowed brow, narrowed eyes, and lips that press together tightly or form a sneer. The nostrils may flare, and the face may appear flushed as blood rushes to the skin. Anger can be easy to spot in its full expression, but micro-expressions of anger are often fleeting, requiring sharp observation. Point four. Fear. Fear can be recognized by wide eyes, raised eyebrows, and a slightly open mouth. The person may also show tension around the mouth and eyes, and their face may appear pale due to reduced blood flow. Micro-expressions of fear are often quick as the person tries to mask their vulnerability. Point 5. Surprise. Surprise is similar to fear, but typically lacks the tension. It's marked by raised eyebrows, wide eyes, and a dropped jaw. Unlike fear, the mouth in a surprised expression is usually more relaxed, and the overall look is one of shock rather than alarm. Point 6. Disgust. Disgust is characterized by a wrinkled nose, raised upper lip, and lowered eyebrows. The person might also pull back their head slightly, as if trying to distance themselves from something unpleasant. This expression can be subtle, especially if the person is trying to hide their reaction to something they find distasteful. Point 7. Contempt. Contempt is often shown through a one-sided smirk or a slight sneer, where one corner of the mouth is pulled upwards. The eyes may also show a dismissive or scornful look. This expression is typically brief and can be easy to miss if you're not paying attention. Recognizing micro-expressions in real-time. Spotting micro-expressions in real-time requires practice and a keen eye. Because these expressions are so brief, it's important to focus on the person's face without making it obvious that you're analyzing them. Here are some strategies to help you improve your ability to detect micro-expressions. 1. Practice with videos. One effective way to hone your skills is to watch videos of people speaking and pause them at random moments to see if you can catch any fleeting expressions. There are also online tools and apps specifically designed to help you practice recognizing micro-expressions. Point 2. Slow down your interactions. When engaging with someone, try to slow down the pace of the conversation slightly. This can give you more time to observe their facial expressions and catch any micro-expressions that might occur. Point 3. Focus on key moments. Micro-expressions are more likely to occur during emotionally charged moments such as when someone is asked a difficult question or is caught off guard. Pay extra attention during these moments to spot any brief flashes of true emotion. Point 4. Look for inconsistencies. If someone's facial expression doesn't match what they're saying, it could be a sign that they're hiding something. 
For example, if someone says they're happy but their smile doesn't reach their eyes, it might indicate that their happiness is not genuine. Facial expressions in context. While micro-expressions are a valuable tool for reading people, it's important to consider the context in which they occur. A person's facial expression might be influenced by factors such as their personality, cultural background, or the specific situation they're in. Here's how to take context into account when interpreting facial expressions. 1. Cultural differences. Although micro-expressions are universal, the way emotions are displayed and interpreted can vary across cultures. For example, in some cultures, people might be more reserved in showing emotions, while in others, they might be more expressive. Being aware of these cultural nuances can help you avoid misinterpretations. Point 2. Personality traits. Some people are naturally more expressive than others. A highly expressive person might show more pronounced facial expressions, while a more reserved person might only display subtle cues. Understanding a person's baseline behavior can help you better interpret their micro-expressions. Point 3. The situation. The situation or environment can greatly influence how a person expresses themselves. For example, someone might try to hide their fear or anger in a professional setting but might be more open about these emotions in a personal context. Consider the setting and the relationship between the people involved when interpreting facial expressions. The role of facial expressions in communication. Facial expressions are a crucial part of nonverbal communication, often conveying more than words alone. By understanding and interpreting these expressions, you can gain deeper insights into what others are really thinking and feeling, even when they don't explicitly say it. Here's how facial expressions play a role in communication. 1. Reinforcing verbal messages. Facial expressions often reinforce what is being said verbally. A smile can enhance a friendly greeting, while a frown can underscore a complaint. When facial expressions and verbal messages align, they create a stronger, more coherent communication. Point 2. Contradicting verbal messages. Sometimes, facial expressions contradict what is being said, revealing a person's true feelings. For example, someone might say they're fine while their face shows sadness or frustration. These contradictions can provide valuable clues about what the person is really experiencing. Point 3. Expressing unspoken emotions. People often use facial expressions to convey emotions they don't want to put into words. For example, a raised eyebrow can indicate skepticism, or a tight-lipped smile can suggest discomfort. By tuning into these subtle cues, you can pick up on emotions that might otherwise go unnoticed. Point 4. Building rapport. Understanding and responding to others' facial expressions can help build rapport and strengthen relationships. By showing that you're attuned to their emotions, you demonstrate empathy and create a sense of connection. This can be especially important in personal relationships and professional interactions where trust and mutual understanding are key. Developing your skills, tips for reading faces, improving your ability to read facial expressions takes practice, but it's a skill that can greatly enhance your interactions with others. Here are some tips to help you become more adept at reading faces. 1. Pay attention to the eyes. The eyes are one of the most expressive parts of the face. By focusing on a person's eyes, you can often detect subtle emotions that might not be as evident in other parts of the face. Look for changes in the size of the pupils, the direction of the gaze, and the movement of the eyebrows. Point two. Watch the mouth. The mouth can also reveal a lot about a person's emotions. A genuine smile, a tight-lipped expression, or a slight twitch of the lips can all provide clues about what someone is feeling. Pay attention to the way the mouth moves in relation to what's being said. Point 3. Observe the forehead. The forehead can show signs of stress, confusion, or concentration through wrinkles or furrows. A relaxed forehead often indicates that the person is calm, while a tense forehead might suggest they're worried or deep in thought. Point 4. Practice mindful observation. Make a habit of observing people's facial expressions in everyday interactions. Whether you're talking to a friend, a colleague, or a stranger, try to be mindful of the subtle cues they're giving off. Over time, this practice will help you become more skilled at reading faces. Point 5. Combine facial cues with other signals. Remember that facial expressions are just one part of the puzzle. To get a complete picture of what someone is feeling or thinking, combine your observations of their face with other nonverbal cues, such as body language, tone of voice, and eye movements. 
7. Gestures and Postures Unlocking the Hidden Language of the Body While facial expressions and eye movements reveal a wealth of information about a person's emotions and intentions, gestures and posture add another layer to the rich tapestry of human communication. Our bodies speak volumes, often saying more than our words ever could. From a simple hand movement to the way we stand or sit, these nonverbal cues are powerful indicators of our true thoughts and feelings. In this chapter, we'll delve into the art of reading gestures and postures, uncovering the secrets that lie within every movement. The science of body language. Body language is a fascinating and complex form of communication that operates largely on a subconscious level. Research shows that up to 93% of communication is nonverbal, with body language playing a significant role in conveying meaning. Dr. Albert Morabian, a pioneer in body language research, found that 55% of communication is through body movements, including gestures and posture, while tone of voice accounts for 38%, and words just 7%. This highlights the immense power of body language in our daily interactions. Gestures and postures are influenced by a variety of factors, including cultural norms, personal habits, and the context of the situation. However, certain movements and stances are universal, transcending cultural boundaries. Understanding these universal gestures and postures can give you valuable insights into a person's state of mind and intentions, even in unfamiliar environments. Understanding common gestures. Gestures are deliberate movements that convey specific messages. They can emphasize a point, illustrate a concept, or express an emotion. While some gestures are culturally specific, many are universally understood. Let's explore some of the most common gestures and what they reveal. 1. Hand movements. Hands are incredibly expressive and can convey a range of emotions and intentions. For example, open palms. Open palms, especially when facing upward, signal openness, honesty, and a non-threatening attitude. This gesture is often used to show sincerity and trustworthiness. Crossed arms. Crossing the arms over the chest is a classic defensive posture. It indicates discomfort, resistance, or a need for self-protection. However, it can also simply mean that the person is cold or seeking comfort. Finger pointing. Pointing a finger at someone is an aggressive gesture that can come across as accusatory or commanding. It's often seen in situations where someone is asserting dominance or expressing anger. Fidgeting. Fidgeting with objects or one's own hands can indicate nervousness, anxiety, or impatience. It's a sign that the person is uncomfortable or distracted. Point two. Touching the face. Touching the face is another common gesture that can reveal a lot about a person's emotions. Rubbing the eyes. Rubbing the eyes can indicate tiredness, disbelief, or an attempt to block out something unpleasant. It's a way of avoiding eye contact, which may suggest discomfort or deceit. Touching the nose. Touching or rubbing the nose can be a sign of uncertainty or lying. This gesture is often subconscious and can occur when someone is feeling guilty or anxious about their words. Covering the mouth. Covering the mouth while speaking or listening can indicate that the person is trying to hide their true feelings or is unsure about what they're saying. It's a gesture often associated with lying or withholding information. Point three. Mirroring. Mirroring is a powerful nonverbal technique where one person unconsciously imitates the gestures, posture, or movements of another. This behavior often indicates rapport, empathy, and a desire to connect. When someone mirrors your body language, it's usually a sign that they are comfortable with you and interested in what you have to say. Point four. The handshake. A handshake is one of the most universal gestures of greeting and can convey a lot about a person's confidence, warmth, and intent. Firm handshake. A firm handshake with good eye contact signals confidence, assertiveness, and respect. It's often seen as a sign of professionalism and trustworthiness. Weak handshake, a weak or limp handshake can indicate insecurity, lack of confidence, or disinterest. It may also suggest that the person is uncomfortable or not fully engaged in the interaction. Overpowering handshake, an overly strong handshake, where one person squeezes too hard or pulls the other person's hand toward them, can be seen as a power play. It often indicates a desire to dominate or control the situation. Decoding posture posture refers to the way we hold our bodies when standing, sitting, or moving. It's a key element of body language that reflects our level of confidence, mood, and attitude. Here are some common postures and what they reveal. 1. Open versus. Closed posture, open posture, 
an open posture where the body is relaxed, shoulders are back, and limbs are uncrossed, indicates confidence, openness, and receptivity. This posture suggests that the person is comfortable and willing to engage with others. Closed posture, a closed posture, characterized by crossed arms or legs, hunched shoulders, and a lowered head, suggests defensiveness, insecurity, or withdrawal. This posture often indicates that the person is feeling uncomfortable, guarded, or unapproachable. Point two. Leaning, leaning in, leaning in during a conversation signals interest, attentiveness, and engagement. It shows that the person is focused on the interaction and eager to listen or participate. Leaning back, leaning back, especially with crossed arms, can indicate disinterest, skepticism, or desire to distance oneself from the situation. However, in some cases, it might simply mean the person is relaxed and comfortable. Point three. Weight distribution, even weight distribution. Standing or sitting with weight evenly distributed on both feet or both sides of the body indicates balance, stability, and confidence. It suggests that the person is grounded and in control. Shifting weight, constantly shifting weight from one foot to the other or from one side of the body to the other can signal nervousness, discomfort, or indecision. It may also suggest that the person is eager to leave the situation. Point four. The power pose, the power pose, a power pose, where the person stands or sits with a wide stance, hands on hips or arms spread wide, and head held high, conveys confidence, dominance, and authority. Research by social psychologist Amy Cuddy suggests that adopting a power pose can even boost feelings of confidence and reduce stress. Point five. Slouching, slouching where the shoulders are hunched forward and the back is curved, indicates low energy, lack of confidence, or disinterest. It's often associated with feelings of defeat or resignation. Context matters, reading gestures and posture in situations. As with facial expressions, it's important to consider the context when interpreting gestures and posture. A person's body language can be influenced by a variety of factors, including their physical environment, cultural background, and the dynamics of the interaction. Here's how to take context into account. 1. Environmental factors. The physical environment can impact a person's body language. For example, in a crowded or uncomfortable space, someone might cross their arms or hunch their shoulders simply to protect their personal space. Understanding the environmental context can help you avoid misinterpreting these gestures as signs of discomfort or defensiveness. Point 2. Cultural differences. Gestures and posture can vary significantly across cultures. What might be considered a confident stance in one culture could be seen as aggressive or inappropriate in another. Being aware of cultural differences can help you accurately interpret body language in diverse settings. Point 3. Relationship dynamics. The nature of the relationship between people can also influence body language. For example, a person might adopt a more open posture when interacting with a close friend or family member but become more guarded when speaking with a superior or stranger. Understanding the dynamics of the relationship can provide valuable context for interpreting gestures and posture. Point four. The flow of the interaction. Body language often changes throughout the course of an interaction. For example, someone might start with a closed posture and gradually open up as they become more comfortable. Paying attention to these shifts can give you insights into how the conversation is progressing and how the person's feelings are evolving. The power of reading gestures and posture, mastering the art of reading gestures and posture allows you to tap into a deeper level of communication. By understanding the subtle cues that people give off through their movements and stance, you can gain insights into their emotions, intentions, and state of mind that might not be apparent from their words alone. Here's how this skill can enhance your interactions. 1. Building rapport. By accurately reading someone's body language, you can adjust your own posture and gestures to create a sense of rapport and mutual understanding. For example, mirroring a person's open posture can help put them at ease and foster a connection. Point two. Detecting discomfort, gestures and posture can reveal when someone is feeling uncomfortable, anxious, or defensive. By picking up on these cues, you can address the underlying issues and create a more positive interaction. Point three. Enhancing persuasion. Understanding body language can also enhance your ability to persuade and influence others. By adopting a confident posture and using gestures that convey openness and sincerity, you can make a stronger impression and increase the likelihood of achieving your goals. 8. The power of voice. 
Decoding tone, pitch, and speech patterns while body language offers a visual map to a person's thoughts and feelings. The voice provides an auditory guide. The way someone speaks, their tone, pitch, speed, and rhythm can reveal a wealth of information that words alone might obscure. In this chapter, we delve into the nuances of vocal communication, uncovering how to listen beyond the words to truly understand what someone is conveying. The science of vocal communication voice is one of the most powerful tools we use to communicate emotions, intentions, and attitudes. Research indicates that vocal cues often carry more weight than the actual content of the words being spoken. Dr. Albert Morabian studies on communication highlighted that 38% of a message's impact comes from vocal tone, while only 7% is derived from the words themselves. This underscores the importance of how something is said rather than what is said. Our voice is influenced by a myriad of factors, including our emotional state, cultural background, and social environment. Just as body language can vary across different contexts, so too can vocal patterns. Understanding these variations and learning to interpret them accurately can significantly enhance your ability to read people. Key elements of vocal communication to master the art of reading people through their voice, it's essential to understand the key elements of vocal communication. These include tone, pitch, speed, rhythm, and volume. Let's explore each of these in detail. 1. Tone. The emotional coloring tone refers to the quality or character of the voice and it's often the most telling aspect of vocal communication. The tone of voice can convey a wide range of emotions, from warmth and friendliness to anger and sarcasm. Here are some common tones and what they might indicate. Warm tone, a warm gentle tone often signals friendliness, empathy, and sincerity. It's the tone you might use when comforting a friend or expressing genuine concern. Cold tone, a cold detached tone can indicate indifference, disinterest, or even hostility. This tone is often used when someone is trying to distance themselves emotionally from a conversation. Sarcastic tone. Sarcasm is characterized by a tone that suggests the speaker's true meaning is the opposite of their words. It often conveys mockery, irony, or criticism. Authoritative tone. An authoritative tone is firm, confident, and commanding. It's used to assert control or convey expertise, often in professional or leadership settings. Nervous tone. A shaky or uncertain tone can reveal anxiety, insecurity, or fear. This tone is often accompanied by hesitations, repetitions, or a higher pitch than usual. Point two. Pitch, the emotional indicator pitch, refers to the highness or lowness of the voice. Changes in pitch can signal shifts in emotion or stress levels. For example, high pitch, a high-pitched voice can indicate excitement, nervousness, or fear. It's often heard when someone is anxious or under stress. Low pitch, a low-pitched voice typically conveys calmness, authority, and confidence. However, an excessively low pitch might also suggest sadness or boredom. Pitch variation, a voice with a lot of pitch variation tends to be more engaging and expressive, indicating a lively, dynamic personality. Conversely, a monotone voice with little pitch variation can suggest boredom, depression, or lack of interest. Point three. Speed, the rhythm of thought the speed at which someone speaks can reveal much about their mental state and emotions. Consider the following, fast speech, speaking quickly can indicate excitement, enthusiasm, or anxiety. It may also suggest that the person is eager to convey their message or is nervous about the conversation. Slow speech, slow speech often indicates careful thought, deliberation, or a relaxed state. However, it can also signal hesitation, uncertainty, or a lack of engagement. Inconsistent speed, frequent changes in speech speed can indicate fluctuating emotions or thoughts. For instance, someone might start speaking slowly to gather their thoughts and then speed up when they become more confident or excited. Point four. Rhythm, the flow of communication rhythm in speech refers to the pattern of pauses and emphasis placed on certain words. This can greatly affect how a message is perceived, even rhythm, a consistent rhythm with well-placed pauses indicates clear, deliberate communication. It suggests that the speaker is in control of their thoughts and emotions. Erratic rhythm, an uneven rhythm, with abrupt pauses or rushed sentences, can signal confusion, nervousness, or emotional turmoil. It may also indicate that the person is unsure of what to say next or is struggling to articulate their thoughts. Emphasis on certain words, 
Placing emphasis on specific words can reveal what the speaker finds most important or emotionally charged. For example, saying, I really didn't mean it, with emphasis on really suggests strong feelings of regret or insistence. Point five. Volume, the energy of expression volume refers to the loudness or softness of the voice, which can also convey significant emotional information, loud volume. Speaking loudly can indicate confidence, assertiveness, or anger. It's often used to dominate a conversation or to ensure that the message is heard clearly. Soft volume, a soft voice can signal shyness, insecurity, or a desire for privacy. It might also suggest that the speaker is trying to convey something sensitive or intimate. Fluctuating volume, sudden changes in volume can indicate heightened emotions, such as excitement, frustration, or impatience. A person who raises their voice unexpectedly might be trying to emphasize a point or express strong feelings. Listening between the lines, how to interpret vocal cues interpreting vocal cues requires careful listening and attention to detail. Just as with body language, it's important to consider the context and the individual's typical speech patterns before drawing conclusions. Here are some tips for decoding vocal communication. 1. Contextual listening. Always consider the situation when interpreting vocal cues. A person's tone, pitch, and speed can vary depending on their emotional state, the setting, and the nature of the conversation. For example, someone might speak softly in a quiet environment out of respect, rather than because they are shy or insecure. Point two. Baseline observation. Before analyzing someone's vocal cues, it's helpful to establish a baseline of their normal speaking patterns. Pay attention to how they usually speak in different situations. What is their typical tone, pitch, and speed? Deviations from this baseline can indicate a change in their emotional state or intentions. Point three. Cluster analysis. Vocal cues are most informative when analyzed in clusters, combinations of tone, pitch, speed, and volume. For example, a high-pitched, fast, and loud voice likely indicates excitement or anxiety while a low-pitched, slow, and soft voice might suggest calmness or sadness. By looking at these elements together, you can form a more accurate interpretation of the speaker's emotions. Point four. Watch for inconsistencies. Inconsistencies between a person's words and their vocal cues can be revealing. For instance, if someone says, I'm fine, in a flat, monotone voice with no pitch variation, it might suggest that they're not actually fine, but rather suppressing their true feelings. Point five. Emotional resonance. Pay attention to how the person's voice makes you feel. Often, our own emotional response can provide clues about the speaker's emotions. If their tone makes you feel tense, uneasy, or reassured, these feelings may reflect what the speaker is experiencing internally. Practical applications. Enhancing communication through vocal awareness being attuned to vocal cues can greatly enhance your communication skills and relationships. Here's how you can apply this knowledge in various settings. 1. Building trust. By matching your tone, pitch, and speed to the person you're speaking with, you can create a sense of rapport and trust. This technique, known as vocal mirroring, helps the other person feel understood and connected to you. Point 2. Negotiation and persuasion. In negotiations or persuasive conversations, adjusting your vocal cues can help you convey confidence and authority. A steady, calm tone with a deliberate pace can make your arguments more convincing and help you maintain control of the discussion. Point 3. Conflict resolution. In situations of conflict, being aware of your own vocal cues can prevent escalation. Speaking in a low, calm tone can diffuse tension and signal that you're open to finding a resolution. Additionally, recognizing when the other person's voice indicates rising anger or frustration allows you to address the issue before it escalates further. Point 4. Leadership and influence. Effective leaders are often skilled in using their voice to inspire and motivate others. By varying your tone and pitch to convey enthusiasm, empathy, or determination, you can influence how others perceive you and guide their emotional responses. Point five. Deepening personal connections. In personal relationships, being attuned to your partner's vocal cues can enhance emotional intimacy. By responding to the emotions behind their words, rather than just the words themselves, you can show that you truly understand and care about their feelings. The voice is a powerful tool for expressing emotions, intentions, and attitudes. By learning to listen beyond the words and decode the vocal cues, you can gain deeper insights into what people are truly thinking and feeling.
This skill not only enhances your ability to read others, but also improves your communication and relationships. 9. The eyes have it. Unlocking the secrets behind eye movements and gaze. If the voice is the music of our emotions, then the eyes are the windows to our soul. Throughout history, poets, philosophers, and scientists have marveled at the power of the human gaze. Eye movements and gaze direction can reveal thoughts, intentions, and emotions with striking accuracy. In this chapter, we will explore how to interpret eye behaviors and what they can tell you about what someone is really thinking or feeling. The science behind eye movements, the study of eye movements, also known as oculometrics, has fascinated researchers for decades. Studies show that our eyes are more than just passive receivers of information, they actively participate in communication. When we speak, think or feel, our eyes reflect our mental processes in subtle but telling ways. For example, research by Dr. Paul Ekman and Dr. Wallace Friesen identified that micro-expressions, brief, involuntary facial expressions, often involve the eyes and can reveal hidden emotions. Similarly, studies have shown that where we direct our gaze, how long we maintain eye contact, and even the dilation of our pupils can convey critical information about our state of mind. Key elements of eye communication to decode the messages sent through the eyes, it's important to understand the different elements of eye behavior. Here's a breakdown of the most significant cues. 1. Eye contact, the connection indicator. Eye contact is one of the most powerful nonverbal communication tools. It can build rapport, express confidence, and convey sincerity. However, the meaning of eye contact can vary depending on context and cultural norms. Direct eye contact, Sustained, direct eye contact typically indicates interest, attention, and confidence. In many cultures, it's a sign of honesty and engagement. Avoiding eye contact. Avoiding eye contact can signal discomfort, guilt, or evasion. It may suggest that the person is hiding something, feeling insecure, or trying to distance themselves emotionally. Prolonged eye contact. While maintaining eye contact is usually positive, prolonged or intense staring can feel confrontational or aggressive. It may be used intentionally to assert dominance or challenge someone. Point two. Gaze direction, the window to thought. Where a person looks during a conversation can reveal a lot about what's going on in their mind. Here are some common interpretations of gaze direction. Upward gaze, when someone looks up, they are often accessing memories or engaging in visual imagination. A gaze to the upper right might indicate visualizing future scenarios while a gaze to the upper left could suggest recalling past experiences. Downward gaze. Looking down can indicate feelings of shame, submission, or contemplation. It may also occur when someone is processing emotions or engaging in deep thought. Sideways gaze. A sideways glance can suggest that a person is considering something or evaluating their surroundings. It can also indicate suspicion or skepticism, especially if paired with narrowed eyes.3. Pupil dilation, the involuntary truth teller. Pupil dilation is an involuntary response that can offer insights into a person's emotional state. While it's not always easy to notice, pupil size can change based on a variety of factors. Dilated pupils. Pupils tend to dilate, enlarge, when someone is interested, excited, or aroused. This response can also occur when the person is focusing intently or experiencing strong emotions. Constricted pupils. Pupils constrict shrink when a person is feeling threatened, angry, or uncomfortable. Constricted pupils can also occur in bright light or when someone is concentrating on a difficult task. Point four. Blinking rate, the indicator of stress or engagement blinking is another subtle but telling aspect of eye behavior. The rate at which someone blinks can provide clues about their mental and emotional state. Increased blinking, rapid blinking often indicates stress, anxiety, or discomfort. It can also occur when someone is lying or feeling overwhelmed. Decreased blinking, slower blinking can suggest that a person is deeply focused, relaxed, or trying to appear composed. It might also indicate that they are intently observing or analyzing a situation. Point five. Eye movements, the revealer of cognitive processing eye movements can reflect how a person is processing information. Neurolinguistic programming, NLP, suggests that different types of eye movements correspond to different cognitive functions. Leftward movements. Looking to the left is often associated with accessing memories or recalling facts. Rightward movements. Looking to the right might indicate that a person is constructing new ideas or imagining scenarios. Upward movements. 
looking up is typically linked to visual processing, whether remembering or imagining. Downward movements, looking down is often connected to internal dialogue or emotional reflection. The art of interpreting eye behavior. Interpreting eye behavior requires careful observation and an understanding of context. Here are some tips to help you decode the messages conveyed through the eyes. 1. Consider the context. Always take into account the situation and the person's baseline behavior. What might be a sign of discomfort in one context could be perfectly normal in another. For example, avoiding eye contact might indicate shyness during a first meeting, but the same behavior in a negotiation could suggest deceit or evasion. Point two. Look for clusters. Just like with body language and vocal cues, eye behaviors are most meaningful when interpreted as part of a cluster. For instance, dilated pupils paired with a relaxed posture and warm tone likely indicate interest or attraction whereas dilated pupils with tense shoulders and rapid speech might signal anxiety or fear. Point three. Observe baseline behavior. Get a sense of what is normal for the person you're observing. If they usually maintain strong eye contact, a sudden avoidance of your gaze might be significant. Conversely, if they tend to look around a lot, occasional wandering eyes may not mean much. Point four. Be aware of cultural differences. Eye behavior can vary greatly across cultures. In some cultures, direct eye contact is seen as a sign of respect and attentiveness, while in others it can be perceived as rude or confrontational. Always consider the cultural background of the person you're interacting with before making judgments based on their eye behavior. Point 5. Don't overinterpret. While eye behaviors can provide valuable insights, they should not be overinterpreted in isolation. It's important to consider the whole picture, including body language, vocal cues, and verbal content before drawing conclusions. Practical applications, using IQs to enhance communication, understanding and using IQs effectively can significantly improve your communication skills and relationships. Here's how you can apply this knowledge in various contexts. 1. Building rapport. Making appropriate eye contact is key to building rapport and trust. In social interactions, maintaining eye contact while speaking shows that you're engaged and interested in the conversation. However, be sure to balance eye contact with natural breaks to avoid making the other person uncomfortable. Point 2. Detecting deception. While no single cue is a definitive sign of deception, avoiding eye contact, increased blinking and sideways glances can be red flags. If you notice these behaviors in a high-stakes conversation, it might be worth probing further to ensure you're getting the full story. Point 3. Gauging interest. When interacting with someone, Pay attention to their pupil size and gaze direction. Dilated pupils and sustained eye contact usually indicate interest or attraction, while constricted pupils and frequent glances away might suggest boredom or discomfort. Point four. Enhancing persuasion. In persuasive communication, using steady eye contact can help you convey confidence and authority. It also allows you to monitor the other person's reactions, enabling you to adjust your approach in real time based on their nonverbal feedback. Point five. Strengthening emotional connections. In personal relationships, understanding your partner's IQs can deepen emotional intimacy. For example, noticing when their gaze softens or their pupils dilate can indicate moments of affection or love, while frequent blinking or downward glances might suggest they're feeling overwhelmed or stressed. Improving your eye reading skills. Tips for practice. Becoming skilled at reading IQs takes practice and mindfulness. Here are some strategies to help you hone this ability. 1. Practice mindful observation. In your daily interactions, make a conscious effort to observe people's eye behaviors. Notice how their eye contact, gaze direction, and blinking rate change depending on the context and their emotions. Point 2. Experiment with your own eye contact. Try varying your own eye contact in conversations and observe how it affects the interaction. For example, See how sustained eye contact during a difficult conversation influences the other person's response. Point 3. Reflect on interactions. After social interactions, reflect on the IQs you observed and how they influenced the conversation. Consider whether your interpretations were accurate and how you can improve your skills in future interactions. Point 4. Learn from experts. Watch videos of skilled communicators, such as politicians, actors, or public speakers and pay attention to how they use their eyes to engage with their audience. Notice the subtle cues they use to convey confidence, sincerity, or authority. Point 5. 
Stay curious. Keep learning about the latest research on eye behavior and nonverbal communication. The more you understand the science behind eye movements and gaze, the more adept you'll become at interpreting these cues in real-life situations. 11. The Art of Contextual Interpretation Navigating the subtleties of social situations in the realm of reading people, context is the compass that guides your interpretations of nonverbal cues. While body language, facial expressions, vocal cues, and eye behavior each offer valuable insights on their own, their meanings can shift dramatically depending on the situational context. This chapter explores how to accurately interpret nonverbal signals by understanding and integrating contextual factors, enhancing your ability to navigate social situations with finesse. The importance of context in communication. Communication does not occur in a vacuum. It is deeply influenced by the context in which it takes place. Context encompasses the physical environment, social dynamics, cultural background, and the relationship between the individuals involved. Understanding the context is crucial for interpreting nonverbal cues accurately and avoiding misinterpretations. Point 1. Physical Environment Setting the stage for communication the physical environment can significantly impact how nonverbal cues are expressed and perceived, formal versus. In formal settings, in a formal setting, such as a business meeting, people may exhibit more restrained body language and controlled facial expressions. Conversely, in an informal setting, such as a casual get-together, individuals may display more relaxed and expressive nonverbal behaviors. Crowded versus. Private spaces. In crowded or public spaces, people might limit their eye contact and body language due to privacy concerns or social norms. In private or intimate settings, individuals may feel more comfortable expressing themselves openly. Point two. Social dynamics. The influence of relationships The nature of the relationship between individuals plays a significant role in how nonverbal cues are expressed and interpreted. Power dynamics. In hierarchical relationships, such as between a manager and an employee, nonverbal communication may reflect power dynamics. For example, a subordinate might exhibit more submissive body language, while a leader may display more authoritative gestures. Familiarity. In interactions between close friends or family members, nonverbal cues may be more relaxed and informal. Conversely, in interactions with acquaintances or strangers, people might be more guarded or controlled in their nonverbal expressions. Point 3. Cultural background. Navigating cultural norms Cultural norms and values can shape how nonverbal cues are expressed and interpreted. Cultural variations. Different cultures have varying norms for eye contact, physical proximity, and gestures. For example, while direct eye contact is valued in many Western cultures as a sign of respect and engagement, it might be considered disrespectful or confrontational in certain Asian cultures. Understanding differences. Being aware of cultural differences helps avoid misunderstandings and allows for more accurate interpretations of nonverbal signals. It is essential to approach cross-cultural interactions with sensitivity and openness. Point 4. Emotional state. The influence of feelings a person's emotional state can significantly impact their nonverbal communication, emotional expression. Emotions such as happiness, anger, fear or sadness can influence facial expressions, body language, and vocal cues. For example, a person who is anxious may exhibit fidgeting, avoid eye contact, and have a tense posture. Contextual cues. Consider the emotional context of the interaction. If someone is receiving bad news, their nonverbal cues might reflect shock or distress, even if they are verbally trying to maintain composure. Practical techniques for contextual interpretation. To accurately interpret nonverbal cues within different contexts, consider applying these techniques. 1. Analyze the overall context before making judgments based on nonverbal cues. Take a moment to assess the overall context of the interaction. Assess the environment. Observe the setting and its influence on communication. A formal boardroom meeting will have different nonverbal dynamics compared to a relaxed social gathering. Evaluate the relationship. Consider the relationship between the individuals involved and how it may affect their nonverbal behaviors. Hierarchical relationships and familiarity levels can shape how cues are expressed. Point 2. Consider cultural and social norms. Be mindful of cultural and social norms that may impact nonverbal communication. Research cultural norms. If interacting with individuals from different cultural backgrounds, familiarize yourself with their cultural norms regarding eye contact, gestures, and physical proximity. Respect social customs. Adapt your interpretations to align with social customs and expectations.
This understanding helps prevent misinterpretations and fosters more effective communication. Point 3. Observe emotional indicators. Pay attention to emotional indicators that may influence nonverbal communication. Identify emotional cues. Look for signs of emotional states such as nervousness, excitement, or frustration. Emotional expressions can provide valuable insights into a person's feelings and intentions. Consider emotional context. Reflect on the emotional context of the interaction, such as recent events or ongoing stressors, to better understand the nonverbal signals being displayed. Point 4. Practice empathy and perspective taking. Develop empathy and perspective taking skills to improve your contextual interpretation. Put yourself in their shoes. Consider how you would feel and behave in the given context. This perspective can help you better understand the nonverbal cues of others and respond appropriately. Engage in active listening. Combine your observations of nonverbal cues with active listening to gain a more comprehensive understanding of the interaction. This approach allows you to interpret cues within the broader context of the conversation. Point 5. Avoid jumping to conclusions while contextual cues are essential. Avoid jumping to conclusions based on a single nonverbal signal. Look for patterns. Consider patterns of nonverbal behavior rather than focusing on isolated cues. Consistent patterns of body language, facial expressions, and vocal cues provide more reliable insights. Check for consistency. Cross reference nonverbal cues with verbal content and other cues to ensure that your interpretations are accurate and balanced. Building expertise in contextual interpretation mastering the art of contextual interpretation requires ongoing practice and refinement. Here's how you can further develop your expertise. 1. Engage in diverse interactions. Expose yourself to a variety of social and cultural contexts to broaden your understanding of nonverbal communication. Engage in conversations with individuals from different backgrounds and settings to gain experience in interpreting contextual cues. Point 2. Reflect on your observations. After interactions, take time to reflect on your observations and interpretations. Consider how contextual factors influenced your understanding of nonverbal cues and what you might adjust in future interactions. Point 3. Learn from real life examples. Study real life examples of complex social interactions and how contextual factors influenced nonverbal communication. Analyze case studies, media portrayals, and expert observations to gain insights into effective contextual interpretation. Point 4. Seek feedback from others. Ask for feedback from trusted individuals regarding your interpretations of nonverbal cues in different contexts. This feedback can provide valuable insights and help you refine your skills. Point 5. Stay updated on research. Keep up with the latest research and theories on nonverbal communication and contextual interpretation. Staying informed will help you incorporate new findings and techniques into your practice. The art of contextual mastery. The ability to interpret nonverbal cues accurately hinges on understanding the broader context in which they occur. By analyzing the physical environment, social dynamics, cultural norms, and emotional states, you can gain a deeper and more nuanced understanding of what people are truly thinking and feeling. Integrating these contextual factors into your observations will enhance your ability to navigate social situations with confidence and effectiveness.